My name is Kurt Ackerman and I'm one of the founding volunteers of the Oranjezeg City Farm, which is where I'm seated. And um, the Oranjezeg City Farm is a project that's just about two years old. And we are a community-based, volunteer-run, non-profit educational project that tries to connect local residents and others to where the food comes from and how it's grown and to raise awareness in other ways about environmental issues and health and to build community um, and to basically be a positive contributor to our neighborhood. We grow everything here organically. Uh, all of our seeds are organic seed produced in organic um, seed mix, seedling mix, um, and all of our cultivation techniques are organic. So what makes something organic is, is difficult um, in some ways, in other ways it's very simple. It's the way something would grow naturally if you didn't add any sort of chemicals or you weren't using a genetically modified um, uh, organism, you weren't growing genetically modified plants. Around the world and in South Africa as well, organic has become one of the lifestyle benefits of the more affluent because it currently is a bit more pricey. Um, and it's one of these um, kind of timely things that people want to do, want to consume and enjoy it. And that's great as a starting point because it creates demand and it creates awareness. But if it just is the kind of thing that wealthy people do, then actually all of the benefits of organic production won't be recognized. In South Africa, the large preponderance of the sort of bulk grains um, and foodstuffs are um, genetically modified as it makes it into the normal diet of an average South African. So the, the bread, the mealy meal, um, those are even, well, imported rice, um, those are genetically modified and our labeling isn't strong enough and the compliance with the labeling requirements isn't good enough that makes South Africans aware of that fact. So that's, that's one fact where South African consumers aren't informed enough and able to make their own choices about whether or not to consume genetically modified organisms. Modifying foods to suit our dietary habits and preferences is something humans have done for a long time. But we've always done it using a natural filter. That is, two things, if you hybridize them, they have to breed and be fertile. Now with laboratory techniques for genetic modification, we can insert into um, a, a banana a gene from some completely different organism and make that a viable banana, but that wouldn't be possible through a natural breeding process. So sometimes that has very good outcomes. So a banana that is fortified with certain vitamins that are missing in the local population's diet, that's great. But we don't know the unintended consequences of that potentially. So there, there are a couple of other aspects to genetically modified organisms that are, are troublesome. Um, one is that in the process of genetically modifying an organism, a private corporation can own the intellectual property of that living organism. And that leads to the privatization of, of not just food, but of the very plant. And that gets to the point where a genetically modified seed that is grown by a farmer who paid for that seed, when that plant grows and then naturally produces its own seed, that farmer may not store and plant that seed again without paying royalties to the original owner of that genetically modified organism. So that's another challenge. The more of these organisms that are grown, that are privately owned in their genetic material, the more of a, a challenge that's gonna represent. For meat, um, genetic modification, it's been going on for a long time with um, you know, auctioning of bull semen and the insemination of cattle and those kinds of things. I mean, that's been happening with um, meat farmers for, for many, many years, decades. Um, so that understanding of genetics and breeding and so on, um, that's been happening. But again, with a natural filter, you're not injecting like a gene from a tobacco plant into a, a cow to produce a certain kind of milk or with nicotine or uh, making things up. But that, that's not happening. But there are other challenges associated with meat and having healthy meat. One is how freely um, mobile are the, the livestock, the animals. Um, so do they have a natural health to their life or are they just penned in? And there are trade-offs associated with 
um, the ethical treatment of the animal and the quality of its meat and how tasty it is and how much fat it has. Um, and so that's a, that's a big debate. Keep your eye out for organic. Don't be too militant about the certification, but ask good questions. Know where your food comes from. If you can, know your farmer. Um, visit the farms and, and try to support organic. And over time, that will help the broader change in the system. So this will take a period of time to, to improve. And just as we do at our weekly market, where we sell the organic produce that we raise here, we buy from other small-scale organic producers, and we sell to our neighbors and others who come, we know those people also go shop at some of the other main stores. Some of them grow their own food. It's a, it's a diversity of approaches, but as long as we all keep taking steps that improve the health of our environment and of ourselves and one another, then we're moving in the right direction. And that's really what this project is all about.